Now, I want to relate this. I'm now moving to um, another topic. I think you, you have dealt with some of the criticisms. Um, but one of the criticisms, one of the major criticisms relating to the CR17 matter was the alleged or apparent misapplication of the code of ethics. You remember that? I remember that. Yes. Now, just to preface that, let's just um, explain the, what that's about because it's in your statement. The, it's obvious that there are two versions of the code of ethics that was that, that, that the two versions that were doing the rounds. One was a 2000 version and the other one was a 2007 version, correct? Correct. And it looks like there was some massive confusion uh, in various people's minds as to which one was applicable, correct? Correct. Though, uh, yes, the one, one would wonder why. Yes. Okay, well, the, uh, I have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yes, yeah. Let, uh, yeah. It can be hard on them. Yes, I think, yes, let's assume everyone was, it was bona fide confusion mm. and not some, uh, as the chair says, they were not pretending to, <laughs> to be confused here. Okay. If, if, even if we give that benefit of, 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 of the doubt. But, the essence for the purposes of this inquiry and, and the topic we're discussing, the essence of that confusion was around the clause that dealt with um, uh, whether the conduct complained of was willful or whether it, it would be willful and or inadvertent. We'll, we'll come to the actual codes, but you remember that whole debate here. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes. Now, the trust of the charge against you in relation to this is not so much that you were part of the people that the chair and and, and I were talking about who might have been confused genuinely or otherwise and so on. Mm. But actually something much more serious where the court basically said you for ulterior purposes basically rewrote the code to suit your, your purpose. I think the English uh, expression chair is uh, cutting the cloth to fit your suit or whatever. The, but it, 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 you understand the thrust of this. So it was not like, no, you maybe you just picked up as you are getting into your office, just happened to pick up the wrong code and apply it. Uh, as you say, it happens all the time. I know many judgments actually where a judge actually applies the law and then it turns out that it was repealed, but you know, it's, it's, um, it, it was not done deliberately. So I want you to comment on that. On firstly, did you uh, go out there, look at the code, think that, no, this code, I won't be able to catch these people with this one. Let me just write my own and or remove these words or whatever. Did you do anything that outrageous? Hey, you know, um, Chairperson um, and, and SC, that made me, um, you know, it, it, my heart was so sore or my heart bled when I read those paragraphs, which I think you will be showing here. Yes, 59, 58. Um, that I'm blamed, I've changed the code. 
And again, following what we've been doing since I joined the Public Protector Office, we rely on the court judgments. We rely on what the constitutional provisions are saying, the facts before us. Again, the very same issue, what happened, what should have happened, the prescripts applicable, whether there's any gap between the two, how can we remedy that? I, I, I never changed the code and I was accused wrongfully. Um, you know, what is worse is that we are the very same judge basing Kabinde, we're still coming to the issue in Kandl. Mm. Was one of the judges who was in the, uh, the uh, 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 was he was still the, she was still the, the judge of the constitutional court by then. Mm. They also referred or referenced to the 2007 code, but we, we're still going to deal with those. Yes. Now she comes back and she says or agree to what is being said in the in the in the in the very same judgment of the of the of the constitutional court of the high court of the uh, high yes. court uh, yes no, by the high court. sorry remember it was the high court just yes. for the record mm. the, that by the time the charges were drawn the matter had not yet gone to the constitutional yes. court yes but the fact of the matter is, I mean, she should have remembered Uguti Ngandla judgment was also relying on the very same. I mean, that is a very prominent case. Mm. I wouldn't blame her for other maybe cases where you'd find that, I mean, we deal with a number of issues, but mm. that is a very prominent matter. She should have remembered that we are dealing with the life of a person here. Yes. Another woman, can they really say this? Can she really do that? Is she that dumb to change even the code just because she wants to get the, the president? So I was just regarded as if I'm this evil person who would want to find anything, no matter what. Yes. And Chair, again, just for the record, the because this can be confusing, the, the two codes, the one is 2000, the other one is 2007. And it was subsequently found that, let's call it the incorrect one is the 2007. So just, just for perspective as we go along. All right. Now, and the paragraph is in the judgment, Sepo, the um, Busasa judgment. Um, sorry, I've lost the reference, but it should be under judgments. We, Paragraph 60. Yes. Okay. So can I read it out? It's just a short, short paragraph here. Yeah. Paragraph 60 says, this is now the constitutional court judgment, the majority judgment. So, the public protector's report reveals that on the facts be placed before her, she accepted that the president did not willfully mislead parliament. Well, we'll come to that because that, that is uh, an issue on its own. Uh, maybe let, let's just flag it. Did you ever accept that the president did not willfully mislead parliament? I don't okay. remember saying that um, in the report. Well, in the report, you said that he willfully misled parliament. Mm, I, yes, yes I mean, that's what we found. Yes. yes. Okay, L let's put that aside. That's not what I'm asking you about now. I just wanted to flag that, yeah. And then it says, this meant that he could not have violated the code. <clears throat> the public protector then, this is the crucial part. The public protector then changed the wording of the code to include deliberate and inadvertent misleading, so as to match with the facts. That was that uh, attempt at English idiom that I tried with the chair. <laughs> Having effected the change in the code, the public protector proceeded to conclude that the president had violated the code. It is unacceptable that the public protector did what no law had authorized her to do. So to understand the trust of the accusations that you change the code, then you found the president has now breached your code, quote, quote, the one that you have manufactured. Um, 
and uh, proceeded to conclude that the president has has, has violated that. You've already answered that you did, yeah, you did not such. True. I did no such thing. Um, yes, in the in the in the report, firstly, the finding was the allegation that on the sixth of November, twenty eighteen, during question session in Parliament, the president deliberately misled the National Assembly. Is such substantiated? Mm. It was based on the fact that it was before us. It was. Um, what he responded to during the investigation, who was given an opportunity uh, to comment on the findings, and that's not true. Yes. And I never, that's why I'm saying how evil I am to just change the code to suit my fact. And I said it last week, Uguti, I don't have anything against the president. I, well, uh, I, I even gave an example which somebody was even saying, can you truly, truly clarify, are you fighting the president? So, so things like this, then they perpetuate something like that and based on wrong facts, was the very same code, the very same constitutional code relied on in Gantler judgment. And also as a learning institution, we then uh, relied on the Nkandla judgment and our legal framework because when you go through our report, we indicate what are the common cause issues under that issue we are investigating, what the law is saying about that. So we will refer to the um, code, we will refer to the Executive Members Ethics Act, we will refer to uh, Section 96 of the Constitution, which um, deals with issues relating to this matter. Further, we have reports, we call them touchstone, which my predecessors relied, in fact, the reports which they've issued. Um, so there are well-known reports like the uh, prominent reports such as the, um, the investigation of the late Mr. Shitega, the Ms. Daina Pule when she was still a minister, Ms. Tina Jumat peterson um, and the MEC yes, Northern Cape, who, who Mr. John Block. Oh. So the very same 2007 code was used. So now I'm blamed to go to Mina. I've, I've changed the code, which is not true.